Okay, welcome back everybody. I can't believe it's the uh, last session of the conference, although I also want to sleep for a year. Um, next up we have Johan Hovold, who is a um, maintainer of the kernel's USB serial subsystem um, and has been an embedded developer for about 15 years. And he's going to tell us about the serial device bus. Please join me in welcoming him. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Johan Ovold. I uh, work as a consultant uh, doing kernel development primarily for uh, embedded systems. Uh, as uh, was just mentioned, I maintain the USB serial subsystem in the kernel and also Graybus together with Greg Cora Hartman. And Graybus is this application layer for the Uniper interconnect that came out of uh, Google's project Aura, the attempt to build a modular mobile phone. Uh, today I'll give an introduction to the new serial device bus, uh, which is uh, aims at making uh, your detached devices fit better into the Linux driver model. Now, UART's and RS-232 has been around for a long time already, uh, since the 1960s and probably a few years before that. Uh, but there's still a common interface, especially in a embedded system for things like uh, Bluetooth, NFC, GPS, and so on. And while the kernel's TTY layer uh, abstracts the serial connection itself, uh, a device is more than just a communication interface you have, associated resources like GPIOs and clocks. And there hasn't really been a good way of describing such associated resources uh, up until now. And of course, this is something that is very important for power management purposes. Uh, unless you want to, wanted to write your driver entirely in user space, the kernel support so far is mostly been limited to um, these line discipline drivers within quotes because they're not really drivers in the Linux driver model sense. And these had the drawback that they had to be configured and initialized by user space. So brief outline of the talk, I'll start with giving a, a very heavy um, light overview of the TTY layer uh, before uh, discussing the two options that were previously available, the writing your driver in user space or doing a line discipline driver. Uh, I'll then discuss the implementation of the serial device bus uh, and go through the interface which you'd need to use if you want to write your own serial device driver. Uh, I'll also point out some, some limitations with the current implementation and itemize some uh, point out some items for our future work. So the TTY layer ultimately then provides this abstraction of the serial or hardware uh, through the familiar character device nodes. Uh, beneath the character device, we have the line discipline, which is where any IO processing is, uh, takes place. This is where, for example, the line editing facilities of the canonical input mode is implemented deals with things like echoing, uh, error handling if you get parity and framing errors, uh, emitting signals and various input conditions. Uh, beneath the line discipline we have the TTY port, which is where the input buffering is currently implemented in the TTY layer. And this is also a sort of abstraction layer with common implementations for dealing with uh, the POSIX semantics involved when uh, opening and closing a port. You need to uh, erase your DTR, RTS signals, and so on. And beneath the TTY layer, sort of like the interface there, is the TTY drivers themselves, uh, which knows how to speak to the specific hardware in question. And in this picture, I've divided the TTY driver in a core part and a lower level driver, because this is typically how it is done. We have serial core uh, with uh, various drivers for SOCs, um, um, serial controllers like the OMAP driver, or the TTY driver could be USB serial, which I maintain. Uh, which then have a bunch of low-level drivers, for example, for the common FTDI chips. And um, this is a bit of a simplification, and the line discipline actually also sometimes calls uh, down directly into the TTY driver, and it does so by calling a set of operations that is defined by the TTY driver. So, uh, the first option there uh, is to write your driver entirely in user space, uh, and that means that you would typically do, use the default line discipline. This means that also means that your, your description of your hardware needs to live in user space. So, the application needs to know which port to open, what line speed to use, and so on. And while some associated resources can be managed from user space, particularly uh, GPIOs and interrupts, you can access through the GPIO lib uh, user space interfaces. 
uh, regulators and clocks, for example, don't have uh, user-based representation and interface currently. Uh, you'd also need to implement your own uh, uh, power management. Uh, you'd need to be notified when the system is going into suspend. And you'd also need to work around the fact that you cannot currently uh, request uh, uh, wake-up interrupts through a GPIO. People do that by, for example, using um, GPIO keys and, and uh, uh, defining them as being wake-up sources. And uh, you also need to implement your own firmware management because, yeah, your driverless and user space, you cannot use the kernel's uh, facilities for that. Uh, and this may be enough for many purposes, but sometimes you need to uh, interact with other subsystems. Uh, this could be Bluetooth, uh, the input subsystem, or NFC. And this uh, then is typically done by having a uh, line discipline. Uh, this is where the line discipline drivers come in. And line disciplines would then, when they're open, they will register for the class devices, which would then be the interface that the user space actually uses to, to you, communicate with the underlying hardware. And these devices would then uh, remain registered while the, the line discipline is open. So you need something in user space to switch the line discipline and keep it open. And this is where we, these uh, common uh, user space demons come in. Uh, LD attach, input attach, and AGI attach, which is now being replaced by BT attach for, for Bluetooth devices, for example. Uh, having your driver live in kernel space means that you have access to the kernel firmware infrastructure, but there are still issues with uh, other uh, resources like GPIOs and, and uh, uh, how power management is going to be implemented. And I'll get back to that in a second. First, a uh, quick example of uh, how this would be used, and this is essentially how HEI attach is implemented today. Uh, you need to open your serial device, TTY device, uh, configure the line setting, baud rates, parity settings, and so on. You switch the line discipline, in this case, to the Bluetooth and HEI line discipline. And in the case of Bluetooth, you actually also need to specify which UART protocol the device question uses. And it's only when this uh, final IO control is executed that the class device becomes available. So we, graphically, we have something like this. Uh, when our system uh, is booted, we go out and power our device tree, for example. Uh, we find that we have an OMAP serial uh, device, in this case, registered with the TTY layer. Uh, we get our character device. And once the system is booted, you can run your HEI attached daemon, which opens the port, switches the line discipline, and only then would you get your Bluetooth device, HEI serial there on the right which uh, tools like HEI's config can use to actually uh, start up the Bluetooth device. So the problem with line discipline drivers is then that your description of uh, what is connected where and how uh, still uh, needs to live in user space rather than being encoded in, in firmware, such as uh, yeah, device tree or ACPI. And we need these user space demons done to actually initialize and set up the ports before we can do anything. Uh, we don't have a, a good way of describing and looking up these associated resources simply because of the fact that we don't have a device tree description of the devices, firmware description. And this is then detrimental for, for power management. And another issue with power management here is that uh, these line discipline keeping the port open also means that we're preventing the serial controller from going into runtime suspend. And while the kernel's firmware infrastructure is available, uh, loading firmware onto a, a device typically means that you need to, or can mean that you need to uh, toggle a reset line, for example. And since we don't have access to e uh, GPIO resources, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that, that fails too. So uh, the serial device bus uh, aims to uh, overcome some of these problems. And it was uh, written by Lo Rob Herring of Lunaro. And it's a generic bus for UART attached devices. Uh, the immediate aim or, uh, was to get rid of some of the Bluetooth line discipline drivers and, and the corresponding user space demons. But um, it was built on uh, years, really, of earlier efforts of trying to get something like this into the kernel. Uh, one device there that kept coming up was a GPS device that needed to be powered, uh, powered on and off. 
And um, these earlier efforts typically aimed at adding something at the serial core layer, uh, which wouldn't be generic enough because it would uh, exclude things like USB serial, for, um, Firewire, or Graybus. Uh, the bus ultimately was um, sorry, um, implemented and uh, posted and merged earlier this uh, last year, um, about a year ago. And it was uh, because of some initial lifetime issues, uh, the, the way it hooked into the TTY layer had to be reverted, and it was enabled for serial core only in 4.12. So, Serdev uh, introduces a new bus type, uh, and the bus type is named Serial rather than Serdev. And uh, the concepts of Serdev controllers and Serdev devices. And the devices here, since it's a, such an overloaded term, is also referred to as clients or slaves. And I'll be going back and forth between the three here. Uh, while you could have a different implementation of CTY, uh, of set of controllers, there is only one uh, controller in the kernel today, and it's the CTY port uh, controller implementation. So this means that we is often, often incorrectly identified with Serdev itself, and there has been some confusion arising from that part, in fact. Um, the TTY port controller works by uh, having the TTY driver register a controller in a client whenever we have uh, a client defining firmware. And when that happens, you don't get your TTY uh, class and char character device at all. And uh, as I already mentioned, the clients will be described by firmware. And initially, we only had device tree support, but uh, next week with 4.15, I will have a CPI as well. So, Returning to the example I used before with the Bluetooth, we now have something like this instead, where when we are booting, we are going out and parsing the device tree, we're probing our lower level um, TTY driver, register with uh, serial core, TTY, uh, with a TTY layer, TTY layer, and the TTY layer will go out and look in firmware, do we have a client to find? Uh, in this case, we do, so we'd register a serial controller and a client. And once the client is bound to its driver, uh, only then would it uh, register the, uh, the Bluetooth device so that once the system is booted, you can just run your AGI config immediately without uh, running any demons beforehand. And this we can compare to the old situation where we've now uh, done away with AGI attached completely. Uh, we are bypassing uh, the line discipline uh, not having the daemon keeping the port open, we've solved the problem with not, uh, not allowing the serial, a serial controller to go into runtime suspend. Uh, but the most important thing is, there again, that the, the client has a firmware description so we can uh, associate it with, with resources like GPIOs and regulators. Uh, a few words on the implementation here. Um, the um, TTY port struct in the kernel has now been amended with uh, two new fields, uh, TTY port client operations, which is two callbacks for incoming data and for getting write breakup notifications when there's more uh, room in the outgoing buffer. And the default um, TTY, uh, uh, client operations would be forwarding data to the line discipline, but now we're forwarding to a core, which forwards it on to the serial client driver. And in the other direction, the controller interface is implementing using those uh, TTY layer helpers and the TTY driver operations that I mentioned briefly there in the beginning. Um, we have a bindings document for the device tree bindings um, in the kernel uh, tree, and a um, serial client is simply a child node of uh, serial device node. And uh, the requirement is that it has to have a compatible property. There are two more uh, optional properties being defined in the generic bindings, uh, and that's max speed and current speed. The driver is supposed to know which speed, uh, hopefully, that device is capable of running and be able to switch it. But uh, when this isn't possible, max speed can be used to, to lower the maximum if you have problems with a specific uh, hardware implementation. And current speed is supposed to be used uh, in cases where the driver cannot know when it's been configured and set up by a uh, bootloader, for example. 
And in this example, the, we have a Bluetooth device, and it's a uh, child of the first UART uh, TI compatible string. And here we see how we can specify our GPIOs, clocks, and whatever the driver needs. And this would show up like something like this now in CSFS. So here we have two uh, serial ports. One has a child node defining firmware, the other one doesn't. So the first one here is bound to the OMA pure driver, and it has the normal, uh, usual um, TTY class device registered. Whereas the second port has a client defined, uh, child defined in, in device tree. So we get a, uh, works. Here, this is the controller device, serial zero, and serial dash zero, uh, zero dash zero, zero is the client. And once the uh, client is bound to its driver on the serial bus, the new serial bus, uh, it can then register the, the Bluetooth device, which is HA0 here. OK, so if you want to write your own serial driver, uh, the interface that you would use uh, resembles that of line discipline operations. And that's fairly natural, since we're uh, sort of bypassing and replacing the line discipline here. So you have functions for opening and closing a port, uh, changing terminal settings, writing data, uh, retrieving and changing the motor control signals, and a couple of callbacks down for incoming data and for uh, write breakup notifications. And there are a few more additional helpers that are implemented using this. Uh, basic setup primitives, this is actually the full list of what's currently implemented. Um, and um, the functions take a pointer to a struct serial device. We have functions for opening, closing, changing the baud rate, uh, enabling hardware flow control, uh, writing a buffer, waiting until the outgoing buffer has been drained, um, flushing the outgoing buffer, uh, checking how much room there is in it, and for uh, modifying and retrieving the modern control signals. Um, thing to note is that there is no write serialization uh, enforced anywhere, so you could potentially run into problems uh, since the drivers would not necessarily have been tested for this, even though the TTY drivers are supposed to be able to have it handle concurrent call to write. Um, there's also no operation ordering enforced by core anymore, so there's a minimum uh, ordering uh, constraint being enforced by the particular TTY port implementation, which is that you cannot write data to a port which isn't open yet, but you could try to change the baud rate. And if you do that, things will currently uh, just blow up. Um, and all these functions, uh, except for write buff and write broom, uh, may sleep. And in the other direction, uh, for incoming data, we have a receive buff pointer, which the serial dev driver can specify. Um, it's calling work queue context. It's supposed to uh, return the number of bytes that the client has accepted and processed. And the right wake up callback is called in uh, atomic context often, uh, which means that you must not sleep, of course. And an example driver here, uh, you need to fill out your serial dev device driver struct. It has an embedded device driver struct uh, where you set your name. This is where you set your OF, uh, your device tree match pointer, and now Zoom with ACPI. Uh, you specify your power management operations, and other than that, it's just two callbacks for a probe and remove. And we have the usual convenience macro for registering your driver when your module is loaded. In your probe function, you go about, as usual, allocating your, your private data. And now, since the serial device that is passed to your driver has a firmware representation, you can use things like clock get or use the OF node directly to look up resources. Uh, you'd store your serial device in your private data so you can use it in your class device callbacks and set your private data in the driver data for power management callbacks and so on. Uh, and the important thing here is just to make sure to set your client operations, the, the callbacks for incoming data before opening the port. And if it makes sense for your application, uh, you can open it during the probe, but for power management purposes, it would be good to defer that until the actual device is enabled. And uh, yeah. You register your class device and return. So uh, what's the limitations that um, Serial has a few limitations though, of course. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it's serial core only for now. 
And the primary reason for this is that uh, it has no hot plug support whatsoever. Uh, this was simply not a use case for the people who were implementing this, and it was just left as something to be decided and implemented at a later point in time. So the initial attempt of enabling Serdev for, um, for all TTY drivers would lead to then uh, really bad problems for things like USB serial where a device can, can go away at any point in time. Uh, it's a single slave only. There's no generic support for any muxing protocols or anything like that just yet. Uh, and the next two points are about uh, I mentioned earlier that we have, uh, you can enable hardware flow control, but that's only about the outgoing direction. And this is due to the fact that uh, there is currently no pushback mechanism implemented in Serdev. So if your client can't keep up, uh, there's no way of, of pushing back to the underlying TTY driver, which could, for example, um, deassert the RTS signal to have the, the other side stop producing data. So instead, data will simply be dropped. And since we're doing away with the land discipline, there's no generic um, input processing provided by Serdev, so you don't get access to things like software flow control, parity framing errors, uh, and overrun errors on propagated, and you don't have any break signaling. Uh, a few words on serial hot plugging. Um, it's currently implemented using TTY hangups and file operations. And, but Serdev doesn't use the file abstraction at all, so we, we're going to be need to do some uh, some changes to the two to while layer, add callbacks for um, to CoreSIO when when we get a hang up event. And um, the thing is that we still have PCI hot plug, uh, so you could theoretically run into these issues by trying to jank out your PCI serial controller. Uh, another problem with hot plugging is that we don't have a good way. We don't have a way of describing uh, dynamic buses currently. Only uh, USB has device tree support. It's some rudimentary support before and it will be uh, improved now in 4.16. But this is typically for things like uh, having an Ethernet controller that's uh, uh, connected to a port uh, and it, which isn't um, removable. And um, if you have something like USB serial, for example, you want to describe, you have a generic FTDI chip, you plug it in, you want to say what's on this other side, we could use something like device tree overlays, uh, but then we currently don't have a way of getting device tree overlays into the kernel. And it seems that it's still quite far away from getting in. Uh, but there are uh, devices such as this example here, it's an uh, HDMI CEC uh, USB device uh, which you can use to um, turn on and off power to your TV at home, for example. Uh, it currently uh, it presents itself to the system as, a, as an ACM uh, generic serial driver, serial device, and you currently need to run your input attached daemon, switch to serial uh, line discipline, and uh, choose pick this Pulse 8 protocol before this dev CEC device comes up and you can actually do something with your TV. And here it should be possible to patch, pass some kind of matching data directly from the CDC ACM driver in this case to Serdev, either if it's by passing an overlay or just a compatible string or some other kind of, of, of platform um, data. And a set of Quirks, um, since we're sort of like retrofitting this uh, bus into the CTY layer, which is a complex beast to begin with, uh, we end up with things like, for example, every serial device, even though we're not supposed to be using a line discipline, uh, we still have a line discipline allocated for every device. And it's actually being called into, uh, even though that probably wasn't uh, uh, done on purpose. Um, the serial controller is always registered. Uh, as soon as you register a uh, TTY port, uh, we'd uh, allocate and register a serial controller. Only then we go out and look in firmware and see if we have a client to find. And if we don't, we roll back, deregister, deallocate, and, and register the normal TTY device. And that's, uh, that could be implemented in a more efficient way. Um, there's, as I mentioned already, there's no character device. You, you won't get the TTY class device if uh, you have a serial controller, uh, serial device defined. 
And some people have been surprised about this, but this is more of a feature than, than a bug. I also mentioned the, that there is no operation ordering being enforced. Um, another thing to, that could maybe in some use cases be uh, a problem is that we don't have any uh, runtime power management for the controllers. And this means that any client device uh, runtime power management status won't be propagated up the tree. Uh, this is roughly equivalent to setting the uh, ignore children flag on your uh, serial port. And this is often probably a good thing to do uh, because uh, you want to have your child devices being powered on and off independently of the communication bus. And only when you're doing I.O. you, you bring on power, bring up the, the serial controller again. Um, there is also a risk of uh, us getting into a bunch of code application here, and uh, that has to do with the fact that we need to remain backwards compatible. Uh, we have uh, line disciplines, we have systems out there using them, and even though we convert the line discipline over to Serdev, we simply can't remove the old line disciplines. And for Bluetooth, this means that part of the implementation has actually been copied over to Serdev, so we now have uh, two competing implementations, uh, which is uh, unfortunate. If it turns out we have a bug in one, we need to fix it in the other as well. So this should probably be unified at some point. Um, there are some naming instances. Uh, I already mentioned that the serial bus is, is named serial uh, rather than serdev, even though the code lives in drivers, TTY, serdev. And, um, and we have this fact that we use device, client, and slave interchangeably in the code base and also in documentation when I'm talking about this. Uh, another thing to watch out for is the uh, kconfig symbols. Uh, there are two symbols for, for CERDA, one for the um, bus code and subsystem itself, and one for this particular uh, TTY port controller implementation. And the, the thing here is that the bus code can be built as a module, whereas the TTY port controller depends on the TTY layer, which is compiling only. So if you choose Serdev to be built as a module, you won't even get a chance to, to select the TTY port controller. And without the TTY port controller, you can't really do anything currently. Um, the TTY port controller, since it's the only implementation, it really ought to default to yes, and it, it will be actually soon, uh, next week. And so, so far we have uh, four drivers merged. Three Bluetooth drivers for a Broadcom TI chipsets and a Nokia driver. And there's a Qualcomm um, Ethernet over UI driver. Um, I want to say a few things about the Broadcom driver. It's a sort of precursor to Serdev. It has hacks for managing additional resources and power management. And it works by having uh, ACPI or platform code describe a child device of the uh, serial controller. And it's this child device um, which would be managing, uh, in this case, GP a GPI on clock or a couple of GPIs. And when the, the platform device is registered, uh, it's, it, it's entered into a, a global driver global list for, um, for this Broadcom driver. And later, when you have your line discipline set up and you're getting callbacks in through the TTY uh, device and the uh, Bluetooth line discipline, You'd go and match in this list and see, do, do this uh, TTY device have the same parent as um, the device in this list? And you'd sort of like call into the sibling device in order to actually access these resources. And this is a layering violation at best, uh, but it's the kind of hacks that you needed to resort to uh, before uh, Serdev. Now, uh, Hans de Gerde, who was mentioned here in the earlier talk, has uh, added um, HDPI support to this particular driver, and uh, Friedrich Denise added it to, um, to the ACPI code. So in starting with 4.15, we're actually going to have proper power management, and we would be able to get rid of these hacks were it not for the fact that we may have some devices that depend on this for um, platform code that depends on this, though. And here we also run into the risk of regressions because we can't do away with the line discipline altogether. So if you have an old system that goes out and tries to set up the line discipline and you've, for example, messed up the kconfig symbols, you could end up in a situation where you can actually start your Bluetooth device and you can communicate with it, uh, but power management will be broken. 
uh, and it was, you won't get any notifications about that necessarily. Uh, it turns out we had similar hacks in the HEI Intel driver, uh, and no one has been converting that one over to Serdev, so that's definitely broken now in 4.15. I think the hope is that no one is using this or something. Um, so, a uh, few words on what's, what's coming. Um, Parity support uh, was just merged for 4.16 this week. It simply enables the parity bit, uh, and there's still no error reporting uh, since that's not supported by the Sierra Core. Uh, there's a Bluetooth driver for Realtek devices coming in, uh, replacing yet another uh, custom uh, HI attached implementation which deals with firmware loading and a config blob. Uh, that also needs to get into the device. Uh, this has been, this is just an RFC right now and it adds support to the three-wire driver, um, uh, but this probably needs to become a, uh, be abstracted and become a, a proper set of driver for this um, set of devices. Uh, we have a RAVE MFT driver that uh, has now been merged as well. Uh, it's used for in-flight infotainment systems, and they have a supervisory process uh, that they communicate with over UART uh, for things like uh, watchdog backlight control and so on. And this uh, GPS device that has been uh, part of the history of Stereo since the beginning uh, has now um, had a reincarnation and a re-implementation uh, using Stereo. It's only used for power management purposes. The device is a little quirky, so you don't really know which power state it's in uh, when, when, you're, when the ship is starting up. So you need to sort of uh, peek into the, the data stream, and if there's uh, NMEA, NMEA uh, GPS records coming out, yeah, then you know the device is powered on, otherwise you try to switch the power um, on instead. And this um, particular driver registers a TTY device, so it's used, it's wrapping Serdev in, a, in another TTY driver, and it's not certain that that's the right interface. Uh, we probably want to have a more generic interface for GPS devices, and yeah, so there's going to be some more discussion about that. Um, the particular implementation has some issues as well, so it's not going anywhere in its current form, at least. And. Another example is a uh, backlight driver for a Dell laptop. Uh, it was posted in October, and it was doing file out directly from the kernel. So it was hard coding and opening uh, dev TTY S0 in the driver. And uh, that obviously needs to be rewritten now using Serdev. Um, back in August, uh, um, series adding some kind of generic MUX support was posted. Uh, and it was used, uh, utilizing the new Muxup system. Um, the driver itself, uh, this, this patch there, it had some issues as well. Uh, there was no flushing being done when you were switching from one client to the other, and there were locks missing. But uh, it's, someone needs to look into whether, whether this can actually be done on this level. It seems like you, it, it's going to be pretty tied to which protocol you're using. Uh, but part of that, that series was a, an I2C controller, which you could uh, control over a UART as well. So, um, some points for, for future work. Uh, obviously, to address some of the quirks and limitations that I've mentioned. Uh, not least adding hot plug support. And since I, at some point, want to be able to enable this for USB serial, but that can't happen until hot plug support has been added. Uh, there are other TTY drivers uh, in the kernel which would need some kind of minor rewrites before you can enable Serdev for them as well. Uh, I just mentioned the multiple slave support. Uh, see if we can add some kind of generic uh, infrastructure for, for, for dealing with multiple slaves, and if this can be done, uh, used to implement some kind of generic RS485 support. Uh, there are further Bluetooth drivers that need to be converted, uh, not least HEI Intel. Uh, which is now broken. And there are a number of other subsystems which have line discipline drivers which could benefit from a Serdev rewrite. NFC, CAM, and the TI shared transport drivers would be three such examples. And there are also some CRIO drivers which could uh, then um, benefit from Serdev. And if you want to 
um, find out more about Serdev, it's, I recommend looking at the code. Uh, it's really not that much code, it's just a uh, header file and a couple of uh, C files in drivers TTY Serdev. And uh, the documentation for the device tree bindings is in the tree as well. The uh, thing to watch out for there is that we have properties that have been accepted into the bindings document which haven't been implemented yet. And there's a, um, an article in LWN as well uh, by Neil Brown, which was part of some of these, he was part of some of the earlier efforts of, of coming up with a generic serial bus. And he has documented some of the uh, yeah, problems and uh, earlier attempts um, in this article. So, thank you. Any questions? There's one in the back there. Thanks for the talk. Um, would you see this as overlapping into the um, SPI and I2C spaces? Because they, while they're not normally necessarily 8-bit, um, they do have that serialness to them? Uh, no, I mean, it's, it, this subsystem will resemble what they're doing, but you can't really, this is still going to be for, for uh, UART type devices. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know if I understood the question fully. That's right. Any more questions? I have one. Will, will this ever rescue me from the nightmare of having uh, two or three USB serial devices that I cannot identify that are connected to um, serial peripherals? Um, if it will, say, hmm? can you repeat the question? Uh, um, it's typical, uh, at least in, in my projects, to end up with a, a bunch of hardware which is connected via USB serial bridges and they enumerate in random orders at boot time and, mm. and I don't know which is which. Is, th is there anything um, in this that would help that situation? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. It's, it's, this would, uh, would probably be built on top of something like having a, a means of identifying a mm. USB serial device. I mean, some of them are well behaved and have a proper serial number which you can use and write your UDIP rules for. But it's only when you've identified a port that you could actually, for example, uh, load one of those device tree overlay fragments uh, to, to describe what's then sitting on the other side of the serial, def, uh, serial uh, adapter. All right. Any more questions? OK, please join me in thanking Johan one last time. And we have a gift here from the conference in appreciation of your um, talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's afternoon tea time.